human rights provide the framework within which uh, uh, bioethics is dealt with uh, at UNESCO. Uh, that is to say that uh, uh, UNESCO uh, address uh, bioethical issues uh, at a global level, trying to provide uh, a path for reflection and maybe shared solution uh, in order to properly cope uh, with the main ethical issues uh, raised uh, in the field of development of biomedical science uh, as applied to human life. And uh, new risks of discrimination and stigmatization uh, are the uh, back side uh, of uh, some developments uh, in uh, uh, new medical uh, sciences and we are trying to address it using non-discrimination as a conceptual umbrella. This is the work we have in front of us. The new risks in the, of, for discrimination and stigmatization in the field of biobanks concern mainly vulnerable populations. They are very popular for this type of research. Often they do not want to participate in them because of the fear that they will have some kind of stigmatization attached to it. However, the problem is they do not participate, they cannot also get the benefits. And on the other hand, if they participate and if the results are in some way unacceptable to them, which may happen, again there is the risk of stigmatization. The field of neuroscience is perhaps the fastest growing science field uh, right now. There are, are many more scientific papers than there were just a few years ago. Every year there are uh, 40,000 people who attend the Society for Neuroscience meetings every year. Uh, there's a lot of funding for neuroscience, particularly in the U.S. Uh, there are new ways of looking inside the brain, uh, even without opening up the skull. Um, there are new ways to stimulate the brain using drugs or devices. What we're learning, I think, is how what's going on in the brain co correlates with what's going on in our minds. Uh, and we're beginning to understand how the mind and the brain are not really separate. To see how your brain is functioning, we might be able to modify its function. But it'd be ethical to do that. Uh, who, who gets to decide? who does what to my brain and how. Even though there might be good social reasons to do that, uh, does society, does the state, do physicians have the authority, the moral authority to do those kinds of interventions? Do they need my permission? Maybe I won't give it. So these are real dilemmas. Uh, the neuroscience is pr presenting some really new questions, even though it's also giving us new ways to understand who we are and what our minds are. The first thing to remember is that in the long run, uh, nanotechnology will be most useful for people in the developing world, where 80% of human beings live. And so uh, we should be thinking with that lens of people from the developing world. Patents are being created around nanotechnology in the rich countries. So they're increasing the disparity in power relationships between the rich and the poor. And in the long run, that's not good for either side, but certainly not good for the poor countries. So there is the possibility in the future of more power accruing to the rich countries and less to the poor. That's one aspect. Uh, there are also uh, scenarios in which uh, people are talking about the use of nanotechnology uh, to increase military power. Uh, that again can cause the same kind of power imbalances. There are also issues that people are talking about with regards to enhancement of human capacity. Uh, and uh, not only at a national level, uh, but also at individual levels, if you have some people that have been enhanced in some way through nanotechnology and not others, that can lead to situations of discrimination. Uh, people who are enhanced might uh, end up being discriminated against 
uh, or those who are not enhanced. Uh, a lot of the scenarios that uh, uh, we are imagining today may not occur. Uh, however, it is important to think about, in my view, particularly the power relationships that uh, nanotechnology uh, can make worse than it is now. Most of the organ donors who are in the uh, in organ trafficking, uh, they are young people, and there is a fear of stigmatization, and that's why they are not keen to go for medical follow-up, and that's why they they are in risk in a serious health risk if they do not go for medical follow-up. And in terms of uh, discrimination, our concern is about the recipients of the organs. Uh, whether there is a fair organ allocation or uh, some people in the society can get access to the organs but some cannot, in, in which is a discrimination. But the most concern is about exploitation of the poor people in, in organ trafficking because uh, it leads to exploitation, it leads to inequalities, it leads, it leads to injustice in, in organ allocation and that's why we are concerned about El tema de la discriminación y la estigmatización es uno de los temas más delicados de la bioética porque tiene relación con muchos otros temas y con otros artículos de la Declaración Universal sobre Bioética y Derechos Humanos que la UNESCO homologó, promulgó en 2005. El problema es que es el desarrollo científico y tecnológico y muchas veces es antidemocrático, por caro, por inaccesible para la mayoría de las personas. Es fundamental que los países desarrollados tengan la iniciativa de organizar, uh, de pasar tecnología, de organizar fábricas, por ejemplo, de antirretrovirales en países en vías de desarrollo, en países pobres, como el África, por ejemplo. Entonces, el tema del estigma y el tema de la discriminación son temas conjuntos. Cuando hay estigma, hay discriminación. El problema mayor en el caso del HIV y SIDA es la inaccesibilidad de las personas pobres y hoy la mayoría de las personas con este tipo de enfermedad son personas pobres, excluidas sociales. El tema más delicado es la inaccesibilidad a medicinas nuevas, antirretrovirales de última generación, caras. Entonces es fundamental que el mundo moderno y que una declaración de la UNESCO sea la más democrática posible en el sentido de que estos, des, estos eh, esvilupos, estos desarrollos, estos alcances nuevos del desarrollo científico y tecnológico lleguen a todas las personas del mundo, principalmente las personas pobres. Access to drugs has been like a chronic problem, a problem that has been there, but as it gets worse with the time. We need to mobilize everybody, you know, like have, have a mechanism whereby we can have funding so that more research and development can done, more drugs can be available, more patients can have access, because these patients live in so much poverty and they are st stigmatized by their conditions. Non-discrimination is an issue that we really need to take care of. You know, it is very important that when one reaches a stage of human rights, that we do not step back. However, it's so easy to step back. And non-discrimination is one of the issues. Now, with the scientific development, it is becoming such a, an important issue that more, in a more dangerous way, in a more subtle way, but still in a more aggressive way, we can be now discriminated, or future generations can be discriminated. And it is one of the main articles on the UNESCO's declaration on bioethics and human rights. Therefore now the scientific community needs to be aware, or even more, really own the principles, the ethical principles in the research. Do we want to be the persons or the institution that is going to stop scientific research? No, not at all. However, what we do need to do is to make sure that scientific research is conducted in ethical grounds and that therefore humanity can reach better stages of well-being without again going against 
their human rights, but research is needed. We also need awareness, and that has another responsibility. What are we communicating? How are we communicating it? And how are we informing the people? It's just like a journalist. You need to document, and then you need to make the information accessible. It is democratic to enjoy the benefits of science, and it is democratic to know also what science can bring against the human rights.